Hey guys, I'm Andrew from MCAT Self Prep, and in this video, I'm going to show you a short snippet from my live car strategy session. You know, over the years, I've helped a lot of students with cars, and I've noticed that other companies tend to teach so many strategies that students get overwhelmed trying to use all of them while approaching their cars passages. And what I've found is that when you can have a single approach to cars and develop consistency from there, you're gonna be much more successful than trying to implement 20 different strategies at once when you're approaching these cars passages. So in my live car strategy session, my goal is to help you understand the one thing that's gonna help you get better at cars if you implement it consistently over time. So I'm really confident that you're gonna get a lot out of this strategy session. If you enjoy the snippet that you see here today, go ahead and head over to mcatselfprep.com to watch the full 60 minute strategy session. And if you have any questions, be sure to reach out. I'm here to help. Well, the five approaches I mentioned to you misunderstand the cars section and treat it like something it is not such as a video game. My one approach to cars is solidly based on a true understanding of the cars section. The MCAT cars is a very hard standardized test that has a very specific purpose. Let's take a look at that purpose as stated by the AAMC. They say, the critical analysis and reasoning skills section of the MCAT exam will be similar to many of the verbal reasoning tests you have taken in your academic career. It includes passages and questions that test your ability to comprehend what you read. Notice here that testing your reading comprehension skills is mentioned as the very first purpose of the car section. Now, as I examined countless different research articles on reading comprehension, I encountered another test known as the Nelson-Denny reading comprehension test. It is essentially the gold standard test used in research studies to accurately measure one's reading comprehension ability. Notice the similarities between this test and the CARS. The Nelson-Denny reading test is a standardized reading test that measures the reading ability of high school and college students. The Nelson-Denny includes two parts, vocabulary and comprehension. The first part of the test, vocabulary, is made up of 80 to 100 multiple choice items, each with five response options. The time allowed for this part of the exam is 15 minutes. The second part, comprehension, requires students to read five to eight passages and to respond to 36 to 38 multiple choice questions based on the content of those passages. Doesn't the comprehension part of this exam sound an awful lot like the cars? Do you think this is a coincidence? I don't think so. You see, the AMC is smart. They know exactly what they are doing. So when they set about to design a test meant to measure reading comprehension, it makes perfect sense that they'd model it after the gold standard test for comprehension. And if you are going to pass a test that truly measures reading comprehension, what do you need to do? You need to become a dang good reader. And not only does the purpose and structure of the car section support the idea that succeeding on this section requires becoming a good reader, but so does my experience working with hundreds of pre-meds. The students who I've worked with who just seem to have a natural gift for cars are also avid readers. The same is true for my younger brother. He reads all the time. He'll pick up a 1,000 page fantasy book and destroy the whole thing in less than a week. He's an innately good reader, which is why he and my other students like him seem to have no trouble with the car section. You see, to conquer the MCAT, you need to become the person that the MCAT wants you to be and is testing to make sure you are. This world wants doctors who can read, understand, and think about complicated literature. Why? Well, I would propose that this ability is directly related to being able to read, understand, and think about complicated research studies in medical cases. To become this kind of person, you need more than cheap tricks. You need to completely change your way of thinking. And changing your mind requires deep work. So what does that deep work look like? What can you do to become a good reader? Someone who quickly understands complex literature. Well, thankfully, there's tons and tons of research on this topic. After examining all the literature, I came to the same conclusion as these researchers. Instruction and comprehension strategies is the intervention with the largest base of support. So what are comprehension strategies? Put simply, they are thought processes used by good readers to comprehend what would otherwise be confusing. For instance, when a good reader encounters a confusing word, 
they quickly pinpoint that word as causing them confusion. Then, based on the context, they apply a comprehension strategy that will allow them to understand that word. You see, good readers don't understand everything they read as they are reading it. What gives good readers the advantage over struggling readers is that when good readers don't understand something, they use a comprehension strategy that allows them to comprehend what they read. And the great news is that these thought processes can be learned. And learning comprehension strategies is the one CARS approach that always works. So what's the difference between the cheap tricks we've talked about and comprehension strategies? I believe there are four key differences. First of all, cheap tricks are ignorant of the context because they are applied the same way every time. For instance, writing a paragraph summary at the end of every paragraph means you are applying the strategy without considering whether or not the context calls for that strategy. Additionally, cheap tricks are superficial. For example, anyone can learn and memorize the different question types. Anyone can write a summary at the end of every paragraph. These cheap tricks don't change your level of intelligence or your way of thinking. For this reason, their effects are short-lived and unstable. Your score may improve for a time or on certain passages or questions, but this will not last because your way of thinking has not changed. Comprehension strategies, on the other hand, are conscious of the context. For instance, when a good reader encounters a confusing word, they will consider the context before selecting which comprehension strategy to use in order to gain true understanding. Good readers understand when and why to apply the strategies they use. This requires hours and hours of practice, resulting in deep learning. Because their brain and their entire way of thinking has changed, the results of learning comprehension strategies are both long-lasting and consistent. Your score will not waver between a 120 and a 125, but you will consistently score above a 127. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to head over to MCATSelfPrep.com to watch the full 60-minute strategy session. At the end of that session, you'll get the links to 100-plus CARS passages and a special coupon towards my Ultimate Car Strategy course. Also, be sure to subscribe to this channel for some more MCAT study tips. And as always, feel free to comment below, and me or one of my tutors will get back to you soon. We're here to help. See you next time, guys.